Uh, so we've had like you know pretty mid records with the Cryptic Coat Stone Forge deck so far, but in games I've been super impressed with Cryptic Coat. I've been really happy casting Stone Forge Mystic. We're going to be looking to find the best package for these cards. I have, for the first time in a long time, been happy to register Stone Forge Mystic in a non hammer deck. We will also I think try Coat and Hammer. I haven't built the deck yet. Um, but also kind of dwelling on the archetype a little bit. One thing I really wanted was lower mana curve. And then I'm also, um, so like the ephemerate stuff with the coat is very cool. It, I think the coat is a little bit lower power level without the ability to like a, a high roll and ephemerate to fairy into play. Ephemerate <laughs> solitude into play. But that just wasn't happening very often. And, you know, I, I think that it's not a super duper important of of what Cryptic Coat is doing in this archetype. It's mostly like this like sick mana sink, very grindy card that puts like a good amount of pressure uh, on your opponent and it's hard to interact with. Um, another thing I was kind of thinking is, I think that Lorne Revealed ended up looking really bad in the other shell, where because we have Cryptic Coat, we just kind of like, ha we, we want to be hitting our land drops, we want to be using our mana to like replay Coat, uh, it, it felt like very rarely did we like have a moment where we wanted to just cast Lord Reveal to draw three cards, and especially now that we're playing the Surveil Lands, we just have a couple. Yeah, that's that's a lot of tap lands. So um, I decided to cut the reveals completely, kind of from the archetype here, and I think I'm gonna be doing that in the blue white version as well. Um, although the blue white version does have subtleties, so they're a little bit better there. Uh, I I almost played a third Surveil Land right now, sticking with two, uh, but Surveil Lands have been super duper good. Uh, and I, I think I'm interested in, again, kind of moving away from the ephemerate package, moving into the Snapcaster Flame of Venor package. This has been just a super good plan to have in, like, these, like, mid-range blue-red blue, blue, <laughs> blue red X decks. The, the Flame of Venor and Snapcaster just, and Tidebind are just this amazing package of cards that lets you grind super-duper hard, and I think will complement the rest of the shell well. We're in red. I think we need to be playing some Ragavans in this kind of deck. I'm playing three instead of four, kind of happy with that number. Uh, also kind of happy to get some spell pierces in the main deck, despite them not being so good against Titan. They, they, they're not the worst against Yawgmoth either. Um, but we're going to get into it. Let me go ahead and get... So a little trick with the all-access pass, if you have a bunch of decks like I do. If you just move one card from the sideboard, one card back to the main deck, it'll like... that's That'll be the deck that gets queued up. Have I thought about a symbol of the Legion? I haven't thought about a symbol of the Legion in a long time. <laughs> Okay, we're on the draw here. Always kind of tough to be on the draw with a counter spell as your first play. But coat into blue white Urza blade affinity's been fantastic. Urza makes some mana. Seems nice. Yeah, actually, that that actually seems kind of nice too. I'm on board. I think just pick it up, play it a lot. Uh, flip over an Urza, very cool. Uncloak an Urza, I guess is what you call that. On the draw against Yog, probably. Nice that they don't have a turn one play. Let's keep both of these. A little bit questionable on the on the Stoneforge, because we, we probably want to hold up Counterspell next turn, but Stoneforge Recall just pretty good in against Yogmoth. So let's let's plan to counterspell Orcish Bowmaster here. Yeah, there is an all-access token. Lasts for, like, four more days, I think. Feels like Kona has a lot of deadheads, so you think that's a non-issue? Yeah, it's a non- the, 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 the flip up part of code is just not that big a deal. It just doesn't matter, basically. It's basically blank text in my mind. It is just, yeah, it's just kind of a non-issue. You're not you're not playing it to like flip shit up and, and like you never really should should be. Okay. Um a lot of decision points here we could do. Cover to the bowmasters, we could tie binding the bowmasters. Let me get a stone forge down. Thank you, Austin. I'll take I'll take a look at it after the stream. Or is a blade? I kind of feel like these decks never play enough lands, but they all play like it's like tw all twenty lands, three talismans. 
Okay. Kind of scared of land, Yawgmoth, I guess. Do we have any Spice Lip Tag Rabbitory in 75? Nope, of course not. Of course not. Let's see. Let's see if we get a Grist Minus here. So it would be awesome if we could draw, like, Lightning Bolt, Prismatic Ending, Counterspell, something to, like, double spell with the Stoneforge this turn. Otherwise, I think we're holding a mana. I guess that does let us double spell. Okay, I think I'm on board. Against an opponent who is missing their fourth land drop. Let's hope that they miss it again. Don't have a, another. Don't uh, drew, drew the first code, of course. So, just kind of getting this into play as resiliency against second grist, so we can get that cauldron play, kill the grist. We draw land, have tide binder up, feel pretty pretty comfy, wumpy. Would code be good in zoo? So that that's something I don't really think at the moment that code is necessarily going to be this particularly good card in decks without Stoneforge Mystic, but there there is a chance that it is. Uh, and if that's the case, it kind of just blows the lid off everything. In in zoo in zoo the uh, the decloaking part is obviously way more relevant. Should say that. So we can court for two here. They're going to court for a haywire mite. So we'll just go ahead and tide binder that activation. Also relevant to have a wizard in play for top deck flame of anores now. So Grist down, they lose their two life. If they don't put a Yawgmoth into play next turn, we're definitely sitting very pretty. Delighted Halfling is pretty scary though, because I am not gonna be able to counter Yawgmoth now. Probably holding up on you know double Stoneforge coat plus or snap counter spell if they like cord instead. It's going to be a ton of pressure on their life total, too. Couldn't they have blocked the Might? Just first is the case. Well, the Cauldron token has Trample, so blocking first, I think, does nothing. Cord for two. Um, let's let's Snap Counterspell this. Having a Hapatra in play would be... I think pretty scary... Although it, it could be just more important to get the, the double unblockable coats down. So that way I'm, I'm really putting a ton of pressure on my opponent's life total. Not 100% sure there. Coat and blue cauldron lets you create your entire deck's worth of ward 2-2s. Two well, oh, I like the sound of that. How, exa how exactly does that work? What am I missing there? Coat and blue cauldron lets you create your... I guess you just need Urza? But you, it's not just Urza, you need a little bit more than that, right? So I, I think I'm going to prioritize putting a coat in play. The unblockable damage is going to really put a lot of pressure on my opponent here. Over Prioritize that over um, Snapcaster Preordain here. And I, I think I probably would not counter a Young Wolf in this spot. The Ward 2 on the token is so nice against Yawgmoth too. They just like can't really... Deal with it very well. It's been a nice tool in this matchup. Infinite mana dump. You just keep recasting coat, bounce and recast. So just like coat normally, <laughs> you know, just like I, I, I guess I'm asking like, is is there's not a combo? You're just saying it's a mana sink. Got it. Oh, oh, in, infinite mana dump for your Rona. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Got it. Damn. So Halfling represents m plus one life for them here because they're going to pay a life and gain two. So, let's, yeah, let's just go ahead and uh, put two coats into play. Lantern of Insight, 18 months. Thank you. Welcome back. The Shielder being uncounterable is obviously pretty pretty tough. I think there's a good chance I'm sending with the entire team. 
There's a chance I will have to evaluate uh, blocks and attacks, but it's another attacker. So let's say I dash Ragavan and I attack with everything. They're going to take six down to four for sure. And then this germ token is a big headache for them. Let's say they like, it's, it almost just is like a guaranteed three damage. They're probably maybe, maybe two damage if they shrink with halfling, but they probably want to like halfling a, a, a Ragavan. So let's say they halfling Ragavan block shielded on Tidebinder, Yogmoth on Snapcaster. They'll take, two plus two plus six that's 10 but they're going to be at 11 here after the, their life gain so if i if i take this game action and let's say they could also gain one more life here be it like effectively 12 and i guess kill the snapcaster yeah yeah let's do i still dash ragavan let's not let's Maybe Snapcaster appeared in looking for Bolt post-combat. Snap appeared in first for Bolt. I think we could do that post-combat. Have like a block before being sacrificed. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, of course. So I think, I think I'm just attacking with my equipment. Uh, the two cloak spells are... Oh, Ragavan, I guess, is... That one's relevant. <laughs> I didn't even look. So... We're definitely not dashing Ragavan. We can flip and this will give us uh, a treasure. Although, I, we will lose the Ward 2. Actually, losing Ward 2 is more relevant. Ward 2 is better. Because they just can't really deal with it very well. Snap ending room is a blocker. This is still Forge Mystic. Not a prismatic ending. So they are going to 3. I feel like I can snap the Preordain. I'm not, I know I'm taking 2 from the Shieldred. Yeah, you can flip them. It's not super duper relevant, though, to be honest. Okay, so let's plan to Tidebinder the Shielder Trigger on our draw step. They're going to have a very hard time with the, the Coats next turn, kind of period. Got Counterspell up also. Um, I wonder, do I mostly just have to Counterspell ha Blood Artist or like a Cord for Blood Artist? I guess I guess if they can assemble two young wolves, you know that's going to be infinite life for them. Well, okay, that's an easy counter kind of spell. Nice when it's easy. Go, coats, go! I got two cards in their hand. What are they? One of them is a grist. Okay. More like one of them's a concession here. What's your plan? I guess I guess this is six life, seven life. The problem is for them that I'm gonna get to Tidebinder, the Shieldred, and then if they want to gain the life, they have to do it now before they can block and stuff. Hill to the chest, six months, thank you, welcome back. So they're going to be at 7, which is super duper dead, even without the recommend dash. Okay, I'm going to bring in both scoldings, the pending, both needles, the feast and famine, the dress down, and the subtleties, I think. Not 100% sold on three subtleties, I guess. Monkey's out, Pierce is out. Oh, I did not mean to bring in this chalice or the explosives. <laughs> okay, looks a bit easier. Like that's a that was a lot of cards. <laughs> not that many cards. Um, I like the flames. I like the tide binders. I think you can trim a snapcaster. Needs to bring in a lot of endurances. Kind of don't want to draw two copies early. Um, you can cut the preordains. You can battle against bowmasters, of course. I want to keep in the rest of the equipment. I want to keep in the counter spells. All right, let's do this. Cut the bolts. The preordain. It's going to be like one preordain over subtlety number. Three, maybe. Yeah, Crypto Code is good. I, I know. It, it, I feel like it's, it's kind of funny because I genuinely just feel like this card has too much text for people to evaluate. Or or the, for the it just says so. It's funny because like usually cards with lots of text people like. 
or maybe maybe it's just that it has a lot of like implied text like like one thing that isn't like literally written on the card is that the ability to like put it into play off stoneforge mystics like lets you like bounce and replay it at instant speed like that isn't literally written on the card it isn't written on the card that you can ephemerate it you know um the ward 2 is on is like reminder text there's <laughs> a lot a lot of the text on the card is reminder text but it's just kind of maybe a lot of it's kind of uh hidden yeah, like the the War Two is just like an incredible ability to have on, a, on an effect like this. It's just so hard to to like play through. Yeah, that's why you don't evaluate cards yourselves. You just come to twitch.tv slash aspiring spike. First game twenty minutes long. Yeah, I wish this was arena where games are really fast, <laughs> but it's not. Although we had, you know, we had, it was it wasn't twenty minutes because we had five minute uh. Five minutes stream starting stream starting soon screen two three four minutes of intro do you feel like this will be better than blue white i'm not sure i'm not sure i feel like i i really wanted a lower mana curve i really wanted to not play lore and revealed anymore also um have you done any work on cloning big things and ephemerating uh, i mean that's just not going to be i think a, a super real plan but we have ephemerated like teferi and subtlety into play solitude into play a couple times but but for the most part, that's just not. That's just not what you're doing. We draw lightning bolts. Draw a flame of an orb. Camera okay, needle grist here, I think. When bouncing cloak. To Stoneforge back down, activate Mystic first. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's that's a good thing for for people to know. So yeah, when you um are, it, this is the same trick with Batter Skull. If you want to play around a removal spell on Stoneforge Mystic, and um, and you want to you, uh, bounce Cloak and turn to hand, you're supposed to activate Stoneforge Mystic, respond to that ability. That ability will just chill on the stack, and then you'll be able to respond to that by bouncing the Cloak. So even if they kill your Stoneforge Mystic, um, you're good. You'll be able to. Uh, put the thing into play. Thinking about the restoration condo deck from a while back. Any ideas that works around that idea? Uh, it's been a little while since I've thought about it. Okay, sad, uncounterable Yogmoth. We do have subtlety. I'm going to go ahead and surveil to try to figure out what it is I'm doing next turn. You know, depend on what I'm pitching to. Uh, a second tide binder, huh? I'm gonna go to graveyard that. I'll pitch subtlety, pitch counter spell. Sockfish for the two months. Thank you. Welcome back. So they went ahead and put the Yogmoth on top. Let's see what we draw. We draw an Odavora. I kind of want to take an unconventional line here. Where my opponent put the Yawgmoth on top, and the Tide Binder play, the tide, like just Tide Binding, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a winning line, right? So why don't we just Flame of Anor the Halfling, and then and then hope that my opponent's other two cards are both spells, maybe both Grists, huh? Sock with the two, Gr Gregorio with the seventeen. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Okay, Dried Arbor, not exactly a spell. Oh, Dried Arbor lets the cord for Yawgmoth. Oh, it's so funny. Let's go to good game, man. I guess I could take one draw step, but let's go to game. Game three. On the play for game three, things will be a little bit better, hopefully. So unfortunate to go a lot better on the play in this matchup, obviously. Yeah, the draw is really good. If we had, if we had a one mana removal spell, though, would have been in good shape. Any thoughts on the all will be one quest for fear playing combo deck you played before? Without Fury, that deck is so much worse. Being able to pitch like redundant pieces or pitch all for all will be one early was just like so important. Kind of like has turned me off of like really wanting to work on it, but it's not impossible that you could play it again. All will be one is really good with the ring. Okay, on the play. Mulligan the one lander, although I didn't really think too much about the surveil lands, I guess, when evaluating that, that keeper mulligan, but 
it's probably fine. But it's also in the middle of six. You have Halfling on turn one again. Maybe we can surveil into removal spell this time. Young Wolf. We'll take a Young Wolf for sure. Young Athena. I'm okay graveyarding this. I really don't want to draw it. And we have Sword of Feast and Famine as a really good... <laughs> ah, huh. Okay, weird. <laughs> as a really good uh, pickup here. Go ahead and counterspell this. Funky with the 25 months. Thank you, welcome back. So I'm pretty happy to draw this subtlety. This will be a nice thing to hold this sword. What is Dressdown's biggest upset against Yogg? It's it's not great in the matchup. Like one 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 thing you really like to do against it, and it's also like actually less relevant this deck, but you like want to dress down when they play Yogg and then remove it. You can really only do that with Flame of Anor, so that's like a lot of mana. It's it's not it's not a super premium card against them, but it's it's like I like to I like to have like exactly the first copy in the matchup typically. Do not veil of summer me. Sometimes like they'll have young wolf in play, they'll grist minus, she'll respond with dress down. Okay, love to surveil into a land. Needle's pretty good though. Yeah, let's need let's needle Yogmoth. I might just like play dress down in my instep. And he gets it for Maul, Flying Ragman. Maul just sucks. Just don't you, like you just don't need to play it anymore. I've I've put I made some flying ragavans. It's so it's, it's very slow also. So they play the Yogmoth. Thank you, Pithic Needle. One card in their hand. What's the hardest modern deck and why is it Yogmoth? I mean, I, Yogmoth is probably it. Um, yeah, Yogmoth is probably the deck. I agree. So I'm down to nine. Two cards in their hand. Hopefully, it's something I can subtlety here. Titan, Titan's hard. Titan's hard too. I mean, there are no easy modern decks. The sim the bleeding a little bit here. Yeah, except blue white control. Just taking two. Ugh, gross. Okay, if we could draw lands. So I guess we have to go flash in subtlety, trade Snapcaster for something, just like block like this, go to two. It'd be nice to like draw a removal spell at all this match. I've not, I've literally not drawn a bolt or prismatic ending. Okay, there we go. I think this exactly keeps me alive. Um, yeah, but I, I'm still still in very bad shape. I 
Be nice if I get tie binder like a dying trigger. Ran out of life to play with. Don't even know if I have uh, live top decks. No, I'm, I'm still working on Crime Novelist. It'll take some time. All right, coat's good, ain't that good. All right, we, we die. Okay, gonna grab Sacred Foundry here. Yeah, tough, tough for sure. But one thing is like, we maybe win that game if I surveil the needle into the yard and then I just like find the land for subtlety and then subtlety the yog. You okay with the amulet deck? Was that me? No, amulet's been around since like before I started playing moderns. <laughs> I don't know. The old Summer Bloom decks, and, like the Splinter Twin era. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you could like figure out who like was the originator of the archetype, but it was not me. No, don't young wolf me. Okay, not young wolfing me. Looks like we're up against Rakdos. There's a blood crypt. Lightning bolts the Ragavan. Stoneforge? Okay, not quite that lucky. Probably surveilling this turn. The train of Ender Yogg. Uh, yeah. Keep that, I guess. Would have been nice to draw, of course, that turn. Okay, just a little monkey, huh? Oh, they don't even have a second land. Didn't get a second white source, so I guess we're gonna go pending plus coat here. It's kind of like Dothy Voidwalker with Ward. Okay, up a game against Rakdos. Not playing the Sanctifiers in the sideboard here since double white I think is a little bit too costly. Get the pierces out, get the extra pending in. Do I want two or three subtleties? I think down a Tidebinder. I'm actually kind of liking Tidebinder a little bit more against Rakdos. Could also play like one spell pierce. But I'll probably play around Tidebinder on fetch lands a little bit more this game. One of my favorite things about stream is my outlandish comparisons. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So it's kind of good to contextualize things. Magic is really a game about comparison. You know what I mean? It's like you just can't evaluate. You can't just like look at a card and know how good it is without like understanding other cards. <laughs> I think Cloak has a time place in Timeless Blue White Green deck. Maybe with added Ephemerate Tide Binder. I mean, Stoneforge is a super important part of making Cloak a good card. Stoneforge is an untimeless. I have I have yet to play t Cloak in a non Stoneforge deck, but it's possible we do at some point. Yeah, Spiritmonger is a little bit before my time, to be honest. Uh, it's like is it like five mana six six? Some abilities, and, and that was like it was like at a time where a five mana six six with like was usually a card that you would play with drawbacks, and it just didn't have drawbacks, so it was crazy. Okay, it takes my one mana spell. The nicest thing too is like, look, we just have an equipment in our hand. It's just like a, a good spell to have, and we're not we're not really bothered that we just have like if this was sort of fire and ice, we like we would just mulligan. <laughs> Do you think it has pioneer potential without Stoneforge? Maybe, yeah, uh, maybe. Pioneer is a weird format, of course. It's like, in a lot of ways, Pioneer is like faster than modern, where. Like, like Co Coat is the kind of card that can exist in a world where there isn't a lot of premium interaction. Or so, so there is a lot of premium interaction where you get to slow the game down long enough for your uh, your cloak, your Coat to take over the game. In Pioneer, like, you just don't have this, like... 
you don't have counter spell, you don't have flame of ignore, you don't have spell pierce, you don't have, or, or you actually do have spell pierce. You don't have lightning bolts, you don't have solitude, you don't have these like these kind of like really good premium interactive spells to slow the game down. Like it's just hard to, hard to like play the kind of games where coat would be good if that makes sense. I got a coat with your five list. I see it. I, I didn't see it. No, but that's exciting. My Twitter notifications have been pretty uh, clogged, to be honest. But congratulations. I'm going to go for the Ragavan uh, block here. It does kind of seem like they have something. Maybe it's an undying effect. Maybe I should just try to set up for flame. The problem is if they just, like, kill my Snapcaster before... Like, if I go end of turn Snapcaster, they just bolt it. I, I just... I'm sitting here looking so dumb, so... Well, I guess I could go Snap. Scolding. You have a second second one? Okay. Did they not shock that turn? <laughs> they did shock that turn, okay. Uh, Snap Scolding looks like it might be kind of nice. Uh, Cryptic Coat looks like it might be kind of nice. We'll just play the Coat, I think. I'm going to play around Moon a little bit. Yeah, I was just playing a Snapcaster to the Flame itself. Get a Surveil Land here. This is a huge problem for them. The Ward 2 is just like... Like, if they have a removal spell, they're going to have to take their entire turn off to kill it, and then it's just going to take over the game. Not to mention, they know about my Snapcaster. Okay, they said to play a spell in their second main phase. Okay. <laughs> I wonder if I just main phase, put the coat back into play. Honestly, Blue Wave felt great. Yeah, I, I, think, I think the Blue Wave build is good. Uh, you know, we're checking this out for the first time. I like. I really want to play one of these builds at the challenge this weekend. This is why we're playing this today, to be honest. Good four color. I'm not the one coat. I mean, you have to play Stone Forge Mystic, but you could play so You could. I don't know. I wouldn't hate it. Yeah, I just don't really know how they beat this. <laughs> Good to go. Needs flash. What well, has flash or Stone Forge Mystic? There's a glitch where Unearth Grist doesn't trigger Insidious Roots. Okay. I, I also I heard that um the the Moss with Dread Knight is also not triggering Insidious Roots. And it's, it seemed to be some confusion if that was correct or not. This time walk him again. They do get to look at my hand. I maybe concede. <laughs> is Ice Fang and a Band Stone Blade of Fibrate Shell the best? No zero shot. <laughs> Ice Fang's just not playable anymore. Unfortunately. I mean, it's still, like, good against Murktide, probably, but... It's, like, the only deck it's good against. When you're, when you're, when you're evaluating, like, cards that used to be played, you kind of have to... You have to, like, kind of look at the metagame. What, like, what deck is this good against? It's not good against Rakdos. It's, it's not good against Yawgmoth. It's not good against Rhinos. It's not good against Titan. Those are the, and it is good against Murktide, so it's good against like one of the five decks you try to target. Let's just not play it. Okay, on the draw, new matchup. Let's keep with this preordain. Yeah, Stoneforge not in timeless, unfortunately. Maybe one day. But yeah, but just being able to go like end of turn brainstorm and then cloak and ephemerate, um, or clo cloak, cloak and omniscience and ephemerate seems kind of interesting. Probably not all that good, to be honest. I was just so much more comfortable keeping these like one land preordains of the draw than I would be with a consider, although maybe maybe too a little too comfortable. Yeah, I could also do Cryptic Coat Cottage. He's a Merc type player, keeping a card on top. Flip Uro for three mana after cloaking. Okay, I I'm I'm on board to to try to figure it out. Okay, let's cast a Stoneforge Mystic here. Uh, 
And it is just so nice that if they if they bolt my Stone Forge Mystic, I just have gotten a pretty pretty clean two for one here. Although I may be stumbling a little bit if I don't draw my third land. This is the biggest thing. It's just like Stone Forge Mystic used to not be a two for one. <laughs> Uh, it is a legacy with like Jitte and stuff. In this format, just just ain't. Hopefully, no Bowmasters, but there is a lot of that card being played. Okay, guess we can spell Pierce the Bolt here. Yeah, I used. I'm using the new. Full art shocklands, but I, I, I agree they're maybe a little, a little confusing, huh? Got four cards in their hand. Maybe slam like shield into the ring. Still plans to brew to Krinko Deco Cauldron. Yeah, it's just taking, taking time. It's a very tough deck, I think, to figure out. Okay, uh, bad shape. I did draw land number three. I don't, it, it, it seems very unlikely that I'm going to be able to successfully tide bind the ring. I guess I probably should have just let the Ragavan go. I wasn't necessarily thinking they were playing the ring in their deck. Well, that worked. But how long can it keep working for him? How good and relevant the Surveillance felt. They're, they're, they're just, don't overthink it. They're modern staples. Smoldering Marsh, huh? Can see to a Bowmaster here. Molten Collapse. Can play it out. Don't overthink, yeah, don't overthink the Surveillance. They're modern staples. You're going to see them in almost every deck with fetch lands. I mean, I'm even playing one in Elves later, because, um, you can, you can, uh, <laughs> I guess I should, maybe should have main phase. I'm kind of scared of Flame of Anor, though. Um, you you can pick it up with Corian Ranger, and it's really it's like with Realm Walker and Elven Chorus. Like you can pick it up with Corian Ranger and like like uh, set up for like more creatures to cast. I can see it at this point probably. A little, little little early, but got a lot to get to today. So we're bringing at least the first needle for their rings. Let's bring in both scoldings, cut both pendings. I think just one. I, I would play Surveillance and Grixis Shadow, yeah. Maybe two. I know they have Bowmasters, but... Does that mean I just want to cut all the Ragavans? I could trim one, probably. Although maybe I should probably trim fourth bolt. Oh, I did, oh, I did not mean to trim. Oh, bring it, bring in the, bring in spell pierce. Go down to two bolts. Let's do this. Okay, it looks good. One surreal land and burn over fiery islet. Uh, I don't feel like you'd be cutting fiery islet for it, but you could play a surreal land and burn. Yeah. They see the first and see the streets five published. No, but I'd love to. But puts on a multi five here also. Go Bear got their diamonds. Awesome. Any plans of revisiting Lutri? Maybe one day. I do like Lutri. But Lutri is the kind of deck I play when I'm really bored and things are kind of stale. And the, and the deck's not that bad, but right now things are like really interesting and exciting. How do you play Zoo versus Mono Black? I'm thinking about Damnation a lot when I'm playing it. Think about Ring a lot. Think about. <laughs> I don't know. Zoo is also kind of, to be, to, to be quite frank. You just kind of, uh, do you not just kind of just mostly <laughs> cast the cards that you draw? <laughs> I don't, I don't, it's, it's obvious, I don't want to be super duper reductive, but I feel like for the most part when you play Zoo, I'm just cast, you know, I would just, I'm just casting the cards I draw. You don't have that many decisions. They're like your sequencing is like, like your most difficult decisions are like your fetching. So the first 5 root stack that was published at least, there's maybe multiples. These four of Ballistas look really weird to me here. 
But I guess I guess they're just really in on it with the cauldron. I I, I I'm kind of into it. I'm into I'm into it. it looks, looks good. It looks very clean. It's kind of exactly what I'm talking about. Like my you know, my I play Stoneforge Mystic. They spend two mana to kill it, and boom, I'm just just coding them. Let me hear those of you feedback after buying the extra games. I mean, it's not bad, but it's also, like, you just kind of have, like... I guess sometimes you have to choose, like, do you play Scion? Do you play Brawler? Do you play Kavu? It's kind of, like, interesting decision points what you're playing around. Um, should they, it, they it, Like, the answer, like, to, should you hold up Stub on a turn? Is, the answer is yes, nine, nine out of ten times. It's, I don't know. I, I It doesn't feel like a deck where, you know, agency is probably an overused word, but... For lack of a better word, it doesn't feel like you have a ton of agency when you play that deck. Same flooded strand here. Fetch down. Why? Like, I'm just not going to fetch it a turn, and then they can't use the Tidebinder. I can also, like, bait. Uh, I can bait a Tidebinder, too. Like, I can go crack the fetch if they Tidebinder, then. I can just uh, Tidebinder in response. Sure. I'm chilling. Do we cast a cloak spell after using a Um it, it enters the battlefield, so it, an instant or sorcery will not be cast. But it will, you know, try to enter the battlefield. Think Kodas potential to start Forge decks? Yeah. But usually you're gonna play it with Stoneforge. <laughs> the Smush Flame of Nora is super cute. Kind of scared to have the, these needles again against the double Molten Collapse deck, I guess. Do you miss Teferi? No, Tidebinder and uh, Flame of Nora are better three drops. Yeah, we'll probably we'll, we'll try to do coat hammer tomorrow. Yeah, game three. Might want a subtlety on the draw. I think just one. Okay, gonna keep this. You miss Solitude? Yeah, Sol Solitude is like kind of the main card you're missing. But, you know, li Lightning Bolt is super nice to have. Flame Manor is super nice to have. Ragavan is mid or whatever. But obviously there's a trade-off. If I didn't miss anything, then obviously this build would be for sure better, but I think it's a convo. I think we'd be playing two Force Navigation deck. Force Navigation is bad and modern at the moment. It is not a good modern card. It's not even very good against Rhinos. It's not even very good against Living, and it's, it's like fine in those matchups, but it's like, I think, not good against... It's it's okay against Titan. Okay, okay against Titan. Bad against Burktide, bad against Rakdos, bad against Yawgmoth. Don't just, it's just not a main deckable modern card in these kind of decks. It's like it's like mid or bad in every matchup. Why do you want to play it?
Yeah, it's good in Force of Negation, yeah, Force of Negation is a combo card. It's a it is a combo card you play in combo decks to force your combo through. It is not a fair card. Yeah, I think I'm going to hold up either Flame plus Pierce or Scolding or Tidebinder plus Pierce or Scolding when I can start trying to hit lands up here day next turn if I need to. Yeah, but it puts like two BFZ duels and Skrail lands. But I do kind of think we're reaching a point where you kind of just want to be fetching. You have like a lot of different fetch targets and like a less, lot less shock lands. Is Rhino's considered combo? Yeah, you could. I, it's it's in the it's in that vein of like what we're talking about here. So I think yes. Uh, I'm going to just play a coat. This way, I don't I don't really care if it gets countered and I can um, not have to go to discard. I'm super happy for resolves. Maybe a little bit worried my opponent's going to like try to go for a ring with counter spell up or something. Wow, so that's how it feels. <laughs> huh. It feels good. I just have infinite three drops, so I'm going to bottom both. Polly, 19 months, thank you, welcome back. Just hold up scolding plus tie binder, tie binder, snap pierce. The cloak is just gonna go the whole distance. The little flooded strand that could. Really kind of surprised they're not just trying to destroy the, the coat. Feels like they're not respecting it very much. I, w I will just let them go to discard. <laughs> Cloak's, Cloak is really good card. Really good card. We pick it up. No, I have, to, I have to go to discard if I do. Although now... No, I pick it up. Although I could try to tie biter the explosives also. Kind of want to incentivize the tie biter. I feel like they've got one here. But the planes and the island left as fetchables. Don't you just bounce code if they destroy it? Oh, right, though. <laughs> so, eight mana. Don't want to go to discard, so. Playing into the uh, explosives a little bit, but I feel like. It's also nice that I can use like my tide binder. Kind of tempting to flame of anore this, but really bad if they just have another flame of anore in their hand. So, and I also feel like there's a really my opponent should probably crack this explosives, although they're probably scared of tide binder. But if they're scared of tide, but they they should be because I could you know, tide binder with Pierce up here. But like if they have counter spell, they they are almost definitely popping this. And then and then they could maybe slam a ring, but they're at nine life and they're facing a lot of pressure. 
Oh, don't even really think the ring is too scary. Pierce the flame. The probably it's just really bad if they have a second flame and I do that. Would you all land? I guess I cast. Oh, do I have eight men? Yeah, I guess I'm just casting Calder with spell pierce up. <laughs> Calder is usually GG against Grixis. It also doesn't necessarily feel like they have the counter spell. Edicts would be crazy there. I'm gonna snap bolts for lethal here. But not until they untap, of course. They missed their land drop? Kind of a lucky. Discards a lightning bolt and a stern scolding. Alright, we're gonna go for something at some point. <laughs> uh uh. Definitely, I'm not very interested in defeating these ring triggers, though. As maybe I should, maybe I should go for uh, Snapcaster here. Think this makes sense before three new cards into their hand, and it's kind of okay if we lose the fight because, like, they have to they have to deal with the ring and they have to deal with the cauldron. So I could, I think I'll just go Snapcaster in response. Counter spell. I like spell pierce because they can't get shouldered down. Not that shielded, I guess, does it. But they also can't play another ring, so that this should this should be GG. Pierce that pierce, let them kill themselves. Yeah, maybe. Here they're letting this resolve. It's like playing the Snapcaster like as like another lethal spell is also it's kind of like a spell pierce because they they have to deal with it, but you don't have to actually target the spell pierce. You can type by the ring. I do not want to type by the ring. <laughs> the ring is gonna kill them. Uh, Mike with the fifteen months, anonymous with the Twitch Prime. Thank you. So I mean, I can type binder the type binder, but then I'm out of mana. Dead on board, dead to ring. What can you do, opponent? Give me the GGs. Thank you, opponent, for the GGs. See you next time. Hit with Ragavan one time. <laughs> but it's on the mold of six. Do your job, Ragavan. Let me cast a three drop on turn two. My first ever turn two coat, maybe. I'll probably hold up tight binder. Useless. Did beat Rakdos earlier, although the match was... We drew pretty well against them. Alright, I always kind of like to just have three three drops against the Thoughtseize. <laughs> Alright, take, take a pick. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing with these today. I'm not sure how I feel about them. I really dislike the Sacred Foundry. Uh, Pony knows what's up. Ooh, they played Dwarven Mine. So I don't really need to play around Blood Moon, I guess. Kind of weird. I'm going to draw two in response. I really don't want them to, like, take my, uh... Take, take this from me, and then I just, like... 
have no two for ones, have nothing to do with my mana this turn. So, uh, if they go like green source red and six, it's kind of tough. Is it better to cloak a creature? I mean, it's obviously better to cloak a creature, but no, it doesn't come up almost ever. I, I think I think even if you cloak creatures, like. It just, it, like, it just doesn't matter that much. Like, you're not really playing it to flip creatures up. It's just, like, nice random upside for the most part. Naval, 16 months. Thank you. Welcome back. Just so nice. So, Forge Missing is a two for one. It's a, it's a two for one now. I'm so excited about that. It has been so long since it's been a two for one. Oh, the code is, you know, even, like, a million for one. Yeah, we have two surveil lands. This this is a surveil land. We're okay, about to get the uh, extra the second one here. They're so good. Still drill land though. <laughs> it's okay. Coat too strong. Okay, third Pearson. Don't like explosives against them very much. Pending's not very good, but hitting red and six can be really important. Two is maybe an okay number. Oh no, let's just play needles. Can needle red into fairy, although most don't really want needle to fairy that bad. Oh, they're probably not even playing to fairy. They may they may even not be playing Ren. But if they're not playing Ren the needles, I guess I guess can name, name reflection, can name red fetch lands, can name besage you maybe. I guess that. That would require them to be playing green. Yeah, but if yeah, if you cloak a Ragavan, it is pretty good with the unblockable, I suppose. After Ragavan being so mid, you think we play some more an action or threat? The thing is, like, we just need the mana curve to be lower, and if you're gonna play a good one mana threat, there like isn't something better than Ragavan. Um Despite Ragavan, I I agree is pretty mid. Rackus Theater. Yeah, they might be on the assault version. The version's pretty cool. Okay, it's all up to Pierce. How good is code out of five? I I don't know. Don't I so strongly recommend to not think about magic cards in terms of like out of five. I strongly just like compare that compare it to other cards, compare it to things on curve, compare it with cards like Stoneforge Mystic. Like if Stoneforge Mystic didn't exist, we wouldn't be streaming all these cryptic codes, but Stoneforge Mystic does exist. So we're super pumped. You know what I mean? It's like I I don't, it's just lost in the sauce, I think, to be like trying to uh, quantify how good a magic card is with numbers. With all the artifacts, DRC may be a decent type of dragon, but we have to play. You have to play four baubles, which I don't know if there's room for. I guess you can play them with the preordains, but preordain like cutting preordain, adding bobble, and your snapcaster deck is weird. Hmm. Well, sure, I'm glad I have all these needles. Let's let's not activate the mystic. Let's um hold up spell pierce for creativity. I think I'm gonna not crack my fetch yet. This card's message you gotta mean something. I mean I think maybe it means just they have doorward mine in their hand as their only other land and they they want a creativity. Seems like that was true. All right, let's start uh, churning through a deck a little bit. Don't want to just like tap out with code here. They still have creativity or Archon. I think it's Archon, yeah. I cast Divination at instant speed. Why are they playing Assault? Assault's, so Assault, Assault's pretty cool in the deck, right? It's a triple red card in a deck that's already playing only red mana anyways. 
Um, it is it, the deck already really likes to play Ren and Six, so like there's a lot of synergy there, and like the, it just it just kind of simply is a good card in the in the archetype as it turns out. Okay, counterspell great draw here. I think you should be able to land. My hand's like just way too instant speed to let them know what's going on here. If their last two cards are another Dwarven Mine or I guess another land plus creativity, we get got, but happy enough to just run this out. They play Beseju. Okay, their last two cards were. <laughs> the last two cards were land creativity. So now we double Flame of Anor Archon. And hope the top deck better. Punished. Uh, I don't know. It's just like it feels like every time my opponent's two cards have to be very specifics. <laughs> they just are. <laughs> it's like all day yesterday. Yeah, they got two cards in their hand. A lot of a lot of bad cards in their deck at the moment with like the needle and the seismic assault. Okay, get needle ridden six now. I know. I, I I feel like if I just didn't say them, I wouldn't like teleport to the timeline <laughs> where my opponent has it. But my opponent had to have, you know, their, if their hand, their hand being thoughts, they also don't have the thoughtsies for them to even induce this. So it's like really kind of perfect three cards. Maybe we'll die to a Dorvin mine. We have drawn two spells in a row, although just one mana spells. Okay, never mind. Uh, I do have another surveil land, so. Yeah, no war wars today. What cards print, push, being printed, push creative, being a tier one deck? Uh, Bowmaster's One Ring, and also Tidebinder, too, I think is pretty good against them. The, the, all, the good, all the good ones, really. Got to grieve with that. They could just get a Dwarven Mine and block it. Oh, I only have, do I have two or three bolts in my deck right now. Three. But boy, do they look pretty. Also, how are they at 20 life? Seriously, how are they at 20 life? They've thought seized. I'm not like, uh... Oh, Archon, 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 I got it. There's only one Archon trigger. That gains them three. Did they not lose more than that? Oh, I counter both Thought Seizes. Duh. I guess I should actually snap Flame so I'm not dead to two Lightning Bolts. I'll just, I'll drill two. Then maybe still bolts. It feels like I'm some there's someone likely to have two bolts at some point this game. Uh they've already used two creativities. I'm gonna play around two bolts instead of land creativity here. Or dwarven mine creativity. Thank you, Preordain. Screw you, Preard in. Uh, keep the Ragavan. Oh, I don't know. Ragavan's maybe bad. They're just like so likely to have removal. So maybe okay. I'm not going to counterspell a, a bolt or push. There's, there's at least one bolt there, so. Just kind of happy enough to get that out of the hand. Then they have two left in the deck. Yeah, I agree there's likely an Archon in hand. Legend rule besage you so they can cast the Archon. Two cards left over there. It's nice that they have another another Archon, they have to, you know. Uh have a land also. 
Yeah, they can also have a seismic assault run in six, of course. It would be nice. Small chance I bolt and pick this up. Oh, the stone forge. Creativity, not Archon. Nice. Whew, tense game. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the, the coat end of turn. Just code two more times. Not a big difference between being at five and six. Two cards in their hand. No more surveillance, sadly. I'll go ahead and fetch, though. A lot of draws that just end the game, including that one. Awesome. So I can hold up Snap Counterspell and still pick up Coat, replay it. Go, Coat, go. Okay, let's get a 4-1 prediction. Up against Kihira. Probably not keeping no lands against Kihira, though. Um... Do I keep the cloak in this hand? I think so. Maybe put back the planes. Yeah, we'll put back planes on the draw. I think with double preordained surveyor lands and stuff. Kahira polluted delta. Got the bottom of the snapcaster. Delta Trium Island. There's blue eye control, fire eyes. A little bit scared it's a fairy. Right, put back that third lamb. <sighs> Come on, two preordains on the draw. Can't hit my third land. Brutal. Dash. Well, I, I was trying to hit my land drop and and not have to dash. That that that's just a losing line. Like we still just lose to ring. Just need to hit your land drop there. Do you actually need ragavans? They're not mandatory, but I I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, the generally lower curve. My name Narset over to fairy with this needle. I'm just gonna play feast and famine over Cauldra too. So, so much exile based removal, call just not very good. And then I think one scolding for solitude is probably okay. Maybe two. It's just really good against solitude. They have four. Up to one lightning bolt. Seems okay. I have like flames. Yeah, you're right. I should, I should have at least I should have some subtleties. I think you just need the first needle against all the ring decks. For Ren. They're not playing Ren, they're just blue white, I think. Let's have the mold of six. Dreadth Magistrate or Melee Major Sideboard? Mm. 
Belly Mage is kind of nice against Titan. I'd be open to playing those cards, yeah. Nice doesn't seem like they're gonna have counter spell available for my cloak. Let's go to this graveyard, the feast and famine. Don't mind losing it too much. I mean, my, my Stoneforge Mystics will be worse for sure, but they'll be worse anyways if I drew it. Yeah, I just cast the code against the planes. And even, even if they have Teferi, like the, they can't really use it super effectively. If they plus, we just bolt it. If they minus on the code, that doesn't matter if they can't minus on the token. They have Dovin's Veto, will feel pretty bad. But I guess the Veto would trade for the code at some point anyways. Okay, Reprieve, kind of the same thing. Hard to play around. They don't play, you know, that many of these, like, non-counterspell counterspells. Um, probably have to subtlety this. The Pierce is going to be pretty dead. Please stop arguing in chat. Chatters, please. Please just stop arguing. It's just <laughs> over nothing. <laughs> Always over nothing. Okay, they don't have any uh, Tide Binders in their deck because they're on Kahira. Yeah, listen, if your message gets deleted, just don't take it very personally. It's just doesn't matter. <laughs> just doesn't matter. It's okay. It's not personal. It'll be okay. When I say I stop arguing, I'm also talking to the mods. Just please, everybody chill. Okay, I'm gonna keep this on top and try to try to kill him. Got a bolt, got an unblockable three two. Got scolding for a solitude. Do I bolt end of turn here? I feel like it could be better if I draw a snapcaster. It's also, the bolt isn't, isn't going anywhere else, and I kind of doubt they're going to counter this right now. Okay, I uh, rewarded for drawing Snapcaster. Rewarded for casting bolt by drawing Snapcaster. So they're going to put themselves to a multiple of three, huh? What are you going to do about this cloak, baby? Okay, Solitude, Scolding. Dude, they played into it. Let's go. Because now this shit just has Ward 2, brother. <laughs> Simsail, Twitch Prime. Thank you. Welcome back. Blue Eye Control, hold us back. Hold, uh, <laughs> Blue Eye Control, hardest deck. Aaron with the 23 months. Thank you. Now we just main face Snap Bolt. So you have to like solitude their own solitude to survive, which is maybe possible. <laughs> but I don't know how they're going to beat the cloak. I guess land verdict. Not anymore. Solitude could not exile itself. You have to you have to play two solitudes in this spot, or like a subtlety solitude would get there. Totally. I guess the the one of bolt was pretty good. I thought I had one other. I had the second subtlety and over one other card. I thought. Although maybe the subtleties aren't that good, right? Like they're they're like they're okay against Teferi, but I have scolding for solitude. So they just don't have that many targets. I think what you want one needle. Alright, let's let's go here. Is sword good? Oh, it's okay. It's I think it's okay in this matchup. Um like it, you mostly play it for Yogmoth and Titan. I think it's really good in those matchups. Or like it's it's a equipment that's worth having in the sideboard for when you play in those matchups. Um 
I think I'd rather have it over Cauldra, and I want to have three equipment. Having Cauldra in this matchup is tough. They just have so many clean answers to it. Teferi, Pending, Solitude, Binding. Cauldra's pretty bad against them. Zabolt loves being in the hand. It's good at six. Not the not a crazy to think about keeping a hand that's just like mostly lands, though, this kind of matchup. No Javier? No, Javier's good with swords, but swords are bad, is the thing. Isn't DRC Red Ragavan? DRC is not a playable card without Mishra's Bobble. Um, I would be open to playing DRC plus Bobble, but that's plus five cards. It's only have three Ragavans. Uh, I'm not... I don't know how you cut five cards from this list exactly, but you, you probably could. Dude, if DRC was a wizard, it'd be over. Is some of the players were testing mono humans? Yeah, sure. I'm still working on um, the Delny Heartless Summoning Imperial Recruiter deck. Not sure exactly when I'll get to it, but hopefully we'll get to it at some point. Okay, a little bit scared of uh, Scary Teferi here. Isis is a fairy. These kind of matchups are nice. Doesn't have it this time. Yeah, cutting the period in the big snap. Like, like it's just like you're just like a snapcaster is just not good at that point. Also, you're making you're making your DRCs worse too if you cut your cut your period in. So, doesn't seem like that's the cut. You're just gonna try to jolt you end of turn. Yeah, Heavy Play is a magic accessories company that um, I really like. They have, like, really cool, like, rounded sleeves. That's, like, the main reason I like them. But they also have, like, lots of deck boxes. And actually, they gave me a bunch of shirts and stuff that I wore. I've been wearing to the gym, but I, I need to wear on stream, too. Uh, or I don't need to. It's just I want to. Not not con contractually obligated. But I, I like them a lot. The owner's really nice. They're super cool. Good for the community. Small business. They're... Good group over there. Um, stash. So I already have a coat, so I think I'm going to get the Feast and Famine here, which could be good on the coat also, of course. Maybe should have got probably should have got a, a dual land here to be honest. It's probably okay not to. Expecting a lot more reanimate on the surveil lands. Well, I mean, it's just that's just kind of like a minor upgrade to a, like kind of an existing deck. Oh, well, a nice upgrade, but like every deck got the surveil lands. Yeah, you you can double sleeve with the heavy plate sleeves, but you have to use their sleeves because their their sleeves also have the inner curve stuff. I re I really like the product though. I'm like. Right, I'm like just totally on them for like the, the time being. Like, I I am someone that will like always like have paper cuts on my hands from shuffling at, like after every tournament, and I would also have um like my cards would be like kind of marked after like shuffling all tournament. I think that that's kind of the case for most um most players that your cards just kind of get marked after long tournament, and being able to uh, have the curve sleeve solves that problem in a big way. Well, they're able to slam their ring here. Gonna be tough to beat. Paper cuts? I don't know. I'm a very clumsy person. I, it doesn't seem like when I've talked about this, it doesn't seem like a lot of other people have had this problem. But I like, I, I definitely have like, like not like my hands are like bleeding all over the cards. But I have like little dings on my hands uh, like after every tournament. Hit another Stoneforge Mystic. Second ring. If only this was a spell pierce, I guess. I mean, it's not the end of the world either, I suppose. Okay, I'm going to cast this sort of Feasted Famine. Okay. 
I do not. These the sleeves are they're pokey. They poke. I don't know. <laughs> it's fine. Kind of scared of a verdict, of course. I thought it was the one ring, not the three ring. Ha 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 ha. So we redraw our Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, I think we cast it. Can you show me some sleeves? I mean, I don't have them super handy at the moment, unfortunately. They're downstairs. I'll I'll bring some up for next you know next uh, later stream. Nine cards in their hand. Uh, Stoneforge Mystic is under cloak. It was like Omnath. Yeah, I think they probably do have Omnath because they have like Breeding Pool and Steam Vents. In, in their deck, I don't know if it's in their hand, obviously. Not a super beatable card, probably. Okay, uh, I cast Cryptic Cloak, Coat, yeah, you could have a Cloaked Creature, it doesn't come up, oh, he has Stoneforge Mystic again, but yeah, you mostly care just about the, uh, the Ward 2 in these spots. Okay, 3 2 that league. Nice little win sandwich there. Let's do. Let's do one more with this. I want to be. I would love to play a cloak deck of the challenge this weekend. Or I keep calling it cloak coat deck of the challenge this weekend. Not sure if I want to do this or the more ephemerate version or if we can find a different version too. Challenge is kind of soon. Also, is, is it showcase challenge this weekend? Thank <laughs> you.